Coming your way on today's San Francisco 49ers report, Yannick Ngakwe still doesn't know why he's not signed with the team so far in NFL free agency with training camp set to begin here over the next few days. I'm also going to take a look at some important Niners defensive trends to really educate you on how the Steve Wilkes defense this year could be a little bit different from what D'Amico Ryans did the previous two years for the Niners and that also has to play into the reasons why I think Yannick Ngakwe would be perfect on this football team. Before we start, though, we're 269 people away from 82,000 subscribers. If you want to be a smarter Niners fan and you want content every day year-round, this is your spot. All you have to do is join the party and hit that subscribe button right now. So Yannick Ngakwe, still available, did a recent interview with Mike Florio Pro Football Talk in which he admitted he's not sure why he's unsigned. And it doesn't make a lot of sense to me either. Here's a direct quote from Yannick Ngakwe. I think this was on Pro Football Talk with Mike Florio, but also via the Jim Rome show is where Yannick actually had the actual interview. Then it was aggregated by Florio and Pro Football Talk. Might be there. I'm not sure, he said. That's a question for not me. It's a question for whoever makes those decisions. The only thing I can control is staying in shape, being in the best shape I've been in my whole career, and being a force when I touch the field again. Any team in the NFL... It's an ideal landing spot for me. It's a blessing to be able to work any job in the league, being able to go and practice with the team, go through walkthroughs, go through film study. It's a blessing. It doesn't matter what organization in particular. And with Ngakwe, this guy has put together a really, really solid career. Let's face it. There are some things in life that just don't make sense. Why are the JFK files still classified? And why is Yannick Ngakwe still not signed by a team when every year that he's been in the NFL, he's been able to rack up at least eight sacks, he's only 28 years old, and he's one of the best edge rushers in the National Football League at a very important position, especially when you canvas how the game is played nowadays when it's very, very important to get pressure on the opposing quarterbacks in a pass-happy league. And if you put Yannick Ngakwe on this team last year for San Francisco, he would have finished second in quarterback pressures. Now, these figures are tallied by Pro Football Reference and every database that you go to. Sometimes these numbers change up a little bit, but Nick Bosa, of course, led the way with 56 quarterback pressures, according to Pro Football Reference. Yannick Ngakwe had 27, 12 more than the next best niner behind Bosa last year, Samson Ebucom with 15. And then Kerry Hyder with eight and Drake Jackson with seven. And then when you look at pro football focus, that's the database that I rely on a little bit more. Bosa had 90 pressures a year ago. That was number one in the NFL. Also had the most quarterback hits in the NFL a year ago. That's why he was able to win NFL Defensive Player of the Year. Yannick Ngakwe, no numbers to scoff at here. 44 quarterback pressures is a great number. And what he's been able to do over the last four years, this is why, because San Francisco doesn't have a lot of depth rushing the passer after Nick Bosa, I think that he would be a perfect option. Each of the last four years, the numbers have continued to remain consistent, and then his career stats over 110 games are great. Dude's played in 110 games in the NFL. He's been able to get 65 sacks. That's more than a sack every other game. 135 quarterback hits is more than a quarterback hit every outing. 65 tackles for loss and 21 forced fumbles. Why is this guy still out there? And why haven't the San Francisco 49ers knowing that, yes, they do have cap space, and yes, they have a need opposite of Bosa because they're relying right now on the unproven Drake Jackson and Cleveland Furl, who's been, a, who's been a bust up to this point. Why they haven't signed Yannick Ngakwe is something that is dumbfounding to me, and I hope that does change because this remains my number one target for San Francisco going into camp, which does begin this upcoming week. So if you want the Niners to sign Ngakwe, I want you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. It's your time to shine, show up and show out. If not, I want you to comment why. Now coming up around the corner, fascinating defensive trends and statistics for why this defense could be a little bit different and the same 
with Steve Wilkes as it was with D'Amico Ryans. But first, shout out to Zbiotics for sponsoring today's show. You can get 15% off at zbiotics.com slash chat sports. Plug in that link or you can use the QR code on the screen right here. What is Zbiotics? Well, let's face it. After y'all hit me with a bunch of super chats on game days or during our live shows, I don't necessarily bounce back well the next day. That is until I found Zbiotics. It's a pre-alcohol probiotic and it's the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. And here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration. That's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down, and it's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut, where you need it the most. Drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol. Drink responsibly, of course, and get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. Head to zbiotics.com slash chat sports. Scan the QR code on your screen right now to get 15% off your first order when you use code chat sports at checkout. You can also sign up for a subscription as well so you can stay prepared no matter the time or occasion. Zbiotics back with the 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. One more time, Zbiotics dot com slash chat sports code chat sports at checkout for 15 percent off we're going to put that link in the comment section and in the description of this video and you see the qr code hovering over me right now so let's move forward with the show today some important defensive numbers for san francisco heading into 2023 here the 49ers pass rush last year according to sharp football analysis some interesting numbers here that i think bode well for the Niners here going into 2023, but also raise some concerns as well. Last year, the 49ers defensive line finished sixth in quarterback knockdowns and pressured the quarterback on 22.9% of dropbacks. That ranked 11th in the NFL. What's crazy about that is, outside of Nick Bosa, there wasn't a lot of production in pressuring, hitting, or sacking the quarterback. That goes to show you how dominant Nick Bosa was last year and why he won Defensive Player of the Year, why he's about to become the highest paid defensive player in the history of this beautiful game, and why he's the best pure pass rusher in the NFL. Pro Football Focus grade 90.9 overall, run defense grade of 81. That's not even his specialty, but he's still elite in that category. A pass rush grade of 90.9, 508 pass rush snaps, 41 hurries, 30 quarterback hits, 90 total pressures, and 39 stops. Here's where it starts to get a bit interesting here for San Francisco. Drake Jackson had three sacks on 315 snaps. 29% of the team's defensive snaps is what he played. Samson Ebucom, though, he's out of here. He's with the Indianapolis Colts. He actually got the most money, average annual value among edge rushers in free agency. That's how weird of a period it was. He played 52% of snaps last year. Charles Amenihu played 53% of snaps last year. They are both gone. And this is why signing Yannick Ngakwe makes so much sense. Yes, Chris Kosarek is the best defensive line coach in the NFL. He's been able to develop all of these players at a really special clip and maximize their individual skill sets. Can he do that with Drake Jackson and Cleveland Furl? For sure. But how about having a proven commodity that he can use in the NASCAR package and getting after the quarterback and terrorizing them on the defensive side of the ball, which can lead to a lot of opportunities? Strip sacks, fumbles, turnovers, interceptions, ball going the other way, and this Niners defense continuing to be dominant like they were last year. Some more numbers to get to here because we like to inform you and entertain you here on the program. But first, let me know what you think of the show and interact with me on Twitter and Instagram at Chase underscore Senior. You can give me a follow on both social media platforms. Love chopping it up with the faithful. Don't be a stranger. Hit me up. And as I predicted, threads, yeah, it's collapsing. How will the Niners defense change under Steve Wilkes going into 2023? Let's talk about that on today's San Francisco 49ers report. 49ers defensive tendencies by scheme and personnel package last year. They were in base 28% of the time. That ranked 13th. Nickel, 71% of the time. That ranked 8th. Dime, 0%. That ranked 29th. 
They rush three only 2% of the time because they run that 4-3 defense. That ranked 28th in the league. They rushed four on 75% of snaps. That was top 11 in the league. They rushed five, meaning sending an extra man 20%. That was only 18th. They rushed six guys or more, only 3%. So D'Amico Ryans did not bring the house last year. That was 19th among 32 teams. And then their blitz percentage, 23%, that ranked 19th as well. How could the Niners be different? How could the Niners' defense be similar in 2023 as it was in 2022? Here's some more information for you. Steve Wilkes was the defensive coordinator for the Carolina Panthers. So you see how the numbers stack up side by side here. And there are a lot of similarities. There are some differences here. So the Niners were in cover three 40.4% of the time. Panthers at 42%. Very close. Cover two, though, a little bit of a discrepancy. Niners, 13.4%. Panthers, 6.3%. Cover four, 16.7%. Panthers in more cover four coverage at 20.4%. Man, 17% for San Francisco, 20.3% for Carolina. And then the zone, somewhat similar, five percentage points of a difference here. San Francisco, 772 And then for Carolina, 728 a big reason why the Niners wanted to bring in Wilkes, though, is that he runs a similar defense to what D'Amico Ryans does, especially up front with the pass rush and with the defensive linemen. Kind of that wide nine scheme a little bit. The Athletic with a good profile on Wilkes, and this provides some good information and context as well. The most important part of the Niners' defensive scheme that the 49ers wanted to continue is their aggressiveness, their single gap philosophy up front with each player being responsible for one gap up front. They can come off the ball with a lot of explosion. And that explosion is a big reason why in this scheme is a big reason why Nick Bosa has been so successful and why the 49ers defense over the last couple of years under D'Amico Ryans was one of the best in the NFL. So with that, we're going to round out the show with another good question here. And I'm pressing you here. The Niners defense will be Better, worse, or the same in 2023 as it was in 2022? Get those answers in. As always, we appreciate you for watching the show. Hopefully today we were able to inform you and entertain you. And if that's the case, make sure you hit that subscribe button.